Hey everyone. In part one of this series, I showed you how to install rigid collars onto the front subframe of a Honda S2000. In part two of this series, I'll show you how to install rigid collars onto the rear subframe. Let's get to it. One of the challenges with the rear subframe is that access to the bolts can be obstructed by the exhaust piping. As such, I recommend that you either disconnect the exhaust hangers or remove the exhaust altogether. Disconnecting the exhaust hangers should allow you to swing the OEM exhaust mufflers side to side and give you access to the rear subframe bolt. If you need help removing your exhaust or exhaust hangers, you can check out my OEM exhaust removal video, which will be linked down below. Another thing you'll need to do is remove the plastic rear strakes. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the four bolts, securing each rear strake to the frame of the car. Now you need to lower the rear subframe. Just like the front subframe, the rear subframe has six bolts that secure it to the frame, three on each side. The forwardmost bolts will require a 19mm socket, while the middle and rear bolts will require a 17mm socket. Place a floor jack underneath the differential and jack it up until it is supporting the differential and the subframe. Once the subframe is supported, remove the rear and middle bolts on each side of the subframe. These bolts are simply too short to be used to lower the subframe. Next, back out the remaining forward most subframe bolts, roughly 25 millimeters or one inch. Once the forward most bolts are backed out, you can slowly lower the floor jack and thus the subframe until it is resting safely on those backed out bolts. This should give you enough clearance to insert a rigid collar into the rear most bolt holes. Keep the floor jack in place to support the rear subframe. At this point, you're ready to start installing the rigid collars. The rigid collars will come in two different sizes. In my kit, these were identified by A and B collars. The A collars go onto the two forwardmost bolts, which are the thicker ones, while the B collars go onto the four rearmost bolts, which are thinner. Start with the middle and rear collars, as there is no bolt there. Lather the top side and bottom side of the collars with copper grease, and then slot the rigid collar into the subframe bolt holes. If you're ever confused about which side the rigid collar is up and which is down, just know that the collars are wider on the bottom. Now, you'll need to do the two frontmost bolts of the subframe. Tackle these one at a time by using a 19mm socket to remove the bolt. Install the grease rigid collar into place, and then add some copper grease to the subframe bolt as well. If you do this job by the book, you'll technically need to replace every single subframe bolt, but this appears to be unnecessary in practice. Tighten the respective subframe bolt until it reaches the bottom of the subframe, while ensuring that the rigid collar stays on the subframe. One thing to note here is that you should feel little to no resistance when reinstalling these bolts. If you do feel some resistance, you should remove the bolt, clean the threads, and reinstall it. Now that all the rigid collars are in place, you'll need to reinstall the middle and rear bolts into place. The bolts will be too short to thread into the frame while the subframe is lowered, so what you'll need to do is raise the subframe until the bolts can thread into the frame. My suggestion would be to try threading the rearmost bolts first. You may find that the bolts may not want to thread into the frame because the subframe is not aligned. Inspect the subframe to see how it is misaligned and then use a pry bar or a rubber mallet to shift it into alignment while you thread the subframe bolts. As a reminder, you'll want to add some copper grease to these bolts as well when you reinstall them. Once you've got the rearmost bolts threaded, you can thread the middle bolts.
Once you've got all the rigid collars and bolts in place, you're ready to raise the subframe back into place. Carefully tighten the six subframe bolts a little bit at a time in an effort to evenly raise the subframe into place. As the top of the rigid collar meets the bottom of the frame, you'll want to ensure that the rigid collars align into the frame cleanly. Use a 19mm socket to torque the forwardmost bolts to 76 foot pounds. Then use a 17mm socket to torque the middle and rearmost bolts 43 foot pounds. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to reinstall the four bolts, securing each plastic rear strake to the frame of the car. Torque their bolts to 7.2 foot pounds. If you removed your exhaust entirely or removed the exhaust hangers, you'll want to reinstall it now. If you need help installing your exhaust or exhaust hangers, you can check out my OEM exhaust installation video, which will be linked down below. Reinstall the wheels and lower the car back down to the ground. Lastly, you'll want to get an alignment since the subframe may have shifted from where it was previously positioned. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave a comment down below for any DIY you'd like to see in the future.